Hello everyone, Nika here with your daily neural nugget. Bring it in, bring it in. Oh, I miss you too. I'm a kisser and a hugger. Bring it in fam. That feels good, right? So today I'm going to make it a little bit different. I know I have stuck to the Idaho 4 and the Noah Presgrove case, but this just happened a few days ago. I mean, this cute 16 year old girl with cute curly blonde hair, big blue eyes. So adorable, throwing out the peace signs out there. She decides to say, welcome home to her mother and her mother's boyfriend when they're walking in their home in Florida at 10 30 p.m and then just goes and then the boyfriend and then some of this insane and disturbing it's out of a horror movie and the reason I want to cover this is because she kind of reminds me of Dylan Mortensen that's right. That's right. But before we get started, I did brew some tea. I have Siberian Cocklebird today, and this is what it looks like up close. I found this in Chinatown. Some of you guys have told me, I go to the same shop in Chinatown that you do, but it's like, ha, which one, honey? Because there's like a hundred. So yeah, they're all very similar, actually. This is what it looks like up close, and I did find a 2020 study showing that this tea is amazing for fungal infections, sinus infections, headaches, arthritis, gastric ulcers, and can also cause multi-organ failure. That is why you should never take health advice from YouTube. Please stop. And I think that the dose makes the poison. So don't do what I do. Don't drink what I drink. This is not medical advice. I did actually dilute this with water because I don't want multi-organ failure. Cheers, let's try this. delicious quite bland very grassy but not as grassy as that green drink I was drinking a few months ago that was that was not my favorite now let's talk about this because apparently there is not only something in the water in Oklahoma and Idaho there is something also in the water in Florida but let's be real with each other we know that there has been something in the water in Florida like the whole time so this adorable looking 16 year old girl, her name is Julia Egler. This is what she did guys. She called 911 to report a violent home invasion that left her mother and her mother's boyfriend dead. This just happened on like July 7th. So very recent. And she decides to call the police. She meets the police outside and tells them that she heard a burglar and then she went to her bedroom that she hid in the closet with her dog. And then when the burglar left, that she came out and her mom and her mom's boyfriend were just unalived. By the way, her mother is, was, was 38 years old and her name was Heli McCollum. And the mom's boyfriend was 22 year old Matthew Schroff. So both dead. Now, what's crazy is that teenagers sometimes don't know how to cover their lies. And this girl said that the burglar came in from a sliding back door, kind of like the Idaho 4. Kind of like the Idaho 4. But when detectives began investigating the evidence, well, it didn't match Julia's story because, first of all, <laughs> There were bloody footprints all over the house from her shoes. Again, it just reminds me of that bloody footprint found magically right outside Dylan Mortensen's room. Right, right. But also there was glass from the slider that was on top of the bodies. Why would there be glass on top of the bodies if it was a break-in, if it was a burglar? It doesn't make sense. And also, she was so stupid that she forgot to turn off the home security camera, guys. That's like the first thing that cops and investigators look at if there's any security cameras, but she forgot to turn them off. So the cameras showed no break-ins, meaning what? Meaning that the crime happened from inside. And of course, as teenagers often do when they are pressured, when they are questioned, as many people often do, she, she was pressured so much by investigators, she allegedly, came clean and admitted to killing her mother and her mother's boyfriend. Now, when I've seen these pictures of this girl all over social media with her mother, she looks so happy. She's like, 
I love you, mommy. We have the best relationship ever. It looks very loving, but we know social media is a lie. All of it, like 99% of social media is a lie. So why would she do something so horrible to her own mother? Now, what's crazy is that this was premeditated. She planned everything out. This 16 year old cute little girl who if we saw passing down the street would be like, she could never, she could never. And again, it reminds me of Dylan because when people see pictures of Dylan, they're like, she could never, she's just so, such a beautiful, loving, caring girl. She's a cute friend. She could never have hurt the four people that are now gone from the Idaho four. So don't let yourself be fooled by looks or just because somebody's a female doesn't mean that they are not capable of doing horrendous things and premeditating them. Here we have a 16 year old girl, Dylan Mortensen, I'm not saying she did it or she did not do it. I'm just saying she's much older, much more savvy, probably knows how to cover her tracks much better. Not saying that she's involved. By the way, this is legit. And you know, this is legit. This information is legit. Cause look, I have a badge, okay? Super police. Anyway, when this girl was questioned, Julie, Julia, Julia, you know what she, she had the audacity to be very descriptive on top of that. She said that when her mom was away, she stole her mom's 38 caliber revolver. And while the couple were out, went to the kitchen, also grabbed a knife, waited for them in the kitchen until they came home at 10.30 PM. She greeted them in the kitchen with a gun in her hand and a knife in her pocket, said, welcome home. And then offloaded that revolver into her mother multiple times, then pointed the gun at Matthew and shot him multiple times, then stabbed him repeatedly. She also said that he begged her to put him out of his misery. So she went back to her mother's room, got another round, inserted that round into the revolver and shot Matthew in the head. What a cute, blonde, blue-eyed, adorable, peace-throwing, smiling on Instagram and Facebook, 16 year old girl, right? Wrong, evil demon. That's what she is. That's what she is. And not only that, but then she proceeded to attempt to stage the scene and failed miserably. Of course, bloody footprints, glass in the wrong spots. She got caught immediately. Now, Again, why would such an adorable girl do this to her mother and her mother's boyfriend, right? But her own mother, again, you have to be very cautious of social media because people put up total BS. They like to paint their lives as, look, I'm so wealthy. I'm so happy. I'm so powerful. I have everything I need. I have love, money, everything, right? Everything that humans desire, but we never really know what is going on behind the scenes. So when further questioned, allegedly, Julia said that she did not get along with her mother. And there were many arguments because Julia wanted a gender transition, but the mom disagreed. So I'm just wondering with this whole gender thing, I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I'm just wondering if she's going to try to use that as a mental health defense because of her gender confusion, because I could see a lawyer trying to utilize that, right? But to me, it's like, okay, this girl is effed up. She, she had no remorse. She had no guilt. You unalived your mom. You premeditated this. And then you called the cops, fake staged the, the crime scene, like, that to me doesn't show remorse or guilt. Am I wrong? Let me know your opinions on that down below, please. Now she is facing two counts of first degree murder. So what's interesting to me is that Julia also mentioned that she disapproved of her mom's lifestyle because she was dating someone so young. She was dating a 22 year old. And what's funny, well, ironic, not funny, is that it's okay for Julia to disapprove of her mom's 
lifestyle, right? Of who she dates and thinking he's too young, but it's not okay for mother to disapprove of her wanting to transition. That's typical, right? Is that not what we're seeing all over the world today? It seems like we have an epidemic of entitlement. Is that not entitlement 101? And let me know, maybe things have shifted. Maybe I am old. Maybe I'm just an old hag who has not adapted. But when I grew up a long time ago, my father said, my house, my rules. You follow them. That's that's all that there is, but it's gonna be interesting if they also bring that up in court because that to me is showing entitlement. That is entitlement at its core, 101. So I'm afraid that the only transitioning that Julia is going to be doing is one from civilian to inmate. So let me know if you've heard of this case. I know there was another case also very recently of another young person. <laughs> unaliving their family members and it was related to this gender confusion it's a touchy subject for a lot of people so i'm i'm hoping to ruffle some feathers i want to know what you guys think about that whole thing and should she be allowed to use the mental health defense and also when she goes to prison will she be going to a male prison considering she identifies as male what do you guys think about that that's it for the day. I'm going to go finish my tea and delicious. You guys have a wonderful night. Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a dopamine inducing image down below for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.